Well, good morning to all of you um, viewers. I was going to say offensive line nuts because it's the only people I could imagine that would be watching this stuff. And, um, you know, I want to do some lecturing today. And I know most of the time I'm, I'm talking anyway, but <clears throat> I'm going to do a, another video later. But uh, I want to do some lecturing about belief. Okay, and I'm folding my arms because the word belief makes me um, nervous. It makes me uh, uh, it makes me wonder. Okay, wonder is a uh, probably a better word. I wonder why things work the way they do, as opposed to I believe this is the way they work. Um, belief is. Um, seeing, I guess. The problem is, it's like, you know, I, I use this, I use this analogy all the time. Um, you like pizza? Yeah. Okay. What's the, what's your favorite pizza? Oh, I don't know. Um, Nunzio's in Long Branch, New Jersey. Okay. Is that the best pizza you've ever had? Um, yeah. Is that the best pizza there is? Yeah, I, I believe. Well, well, no. I, how could I ever know that? Because I just knocked over a garbage can. Because I haven't had all the pizza. I don't know. Okay. And uh, opinions and beliefs are good, especially when they're based on some um, empirical data. But unless you have all the data, I don't know. You know, you, you, you might be beating a dead horse. Um, you know, what I've done over the last probably five, six years is gone to a thing called fundamentals. And we've mentioned that many times. Um, the fundamentals are simply this. Uh, and, it, and it's been evolving, but it's pretty much the same. I used to say tight hands, big chest, little steps. Uh, now I say um, stability, which is basically rooting your feet. Think of yourself as a big tree. You're rooting your feet to the ground and you're defying the force of gravity. If you get knocked over, you can define the force, you can defy the force of gravity. Okay, the next fundamental is condensing, making yourself lower, lowering your center of gravity. Not necessarily bending over because that's that affects your stability. You know, a tree that's bent over, it's really straining to stay up. Okay. Although sometimes in the wind you have to bend over. Okay, but condensing makes your, your lowers your center of gravity and it allows you to be less of a lever. People can affect you with their force less because you're shorter, a short lever. You know, it's just like you're changing a tire and you, you can't move the lug nut so you go and get a length of pipe. Half you guys don't even do this anymore. It's the old guys I'm talking to. You stick the pipe on the lug, lug wrench and pow, well, you've, you've not, you've, it's, you have the same strength, but you've magnified your power through the power of leverage, Archimedes, God bless him. Okay. And the third, uh, fundamental is playing long. And, and this is, this might be the one that, that people misunderstood the most, but, uh, what it means is I want my hands. It doesn't, I'm not, you know, like, it's it's a very nice thought to you know uh, safety and and all that, but basically, it's a dangerous. This life is dangerous, okay, and and football is cer certainly dangerous. It can be less dangerous, but it's still going to be dangerous. It's not changing. But what we've learned is that by proceeding contact with our hands, whether we hit with our shoulder. I don't, I don't ever, ever tell a kid to hit with his head, ever, never. It's not his face, nothing. If it happens, it happens. And I try to get him to not do it. But I want the hands to precede contact. And I don't mean straight out. I mean proceed. That's the first thing it's going to hit. What we've learned is that the hands are adaptable. Okay. The head... Somewhat adaptable. The shoulders are 
they're not adaptable at all. If I had horns, you know, I was a bull, I, I could horn you up. But, but basically, I got a face to, to be you. But the hands can stretch and move around and do all sorts of things. They can pull, they can push, they can throw, and they can work independently. They can adapt to oddball surf, circuit, surfaces. Okay, and of course, we use the, the med ball because the med ball is it's um, you know endless I mean it's infinite surfaces and it it focuses the hands okay and, it, and it's a small target so it, it's easy to hit or it's easy to develop the skill of being precise with your hands that's the reason for it we and we talked about the meatballs already meatballs are give you some articulation without using your arms to move okay and make no mistake uh, this is a violent, violent pastime. Uh, it's not for everybody. Uh, sometimes I wonder if it was for me. Um, you know, some of the stuff that, that you have to do, it's what you do, you know, but uh, I'm, I'm not trying to take the violence out of it, but I do know this. If your whole game is nothing but violence, someone's gonna be more violent than you. They're gonna whip your butt. Okay, you got to have a little bit more adaptability and you've got to be able to make different types of forces and resistance. Okay, now I've been talking about a thing called rock, paper, scissors. And what it, what it means to me might not be what it means to you, but, you know, uh, what is it? Um, scissors uh, gets broken by the rock, paper covers the, the, the rock and scissors cuts the paper. Um, what, it, what I try to make that analogy for that are, are the types of forces and resistances that you're likely to encounter in a conflict, okay, in striving. You know, we're, again, we're humans, we're bipeds, we're, we've got limitations, we've got certain strengths that we can uh, rely on. We're very mobile, but basically to stay on our feet, we have to be skillful and we're not inherently stable okay you get knocked around you fall on your butt okay so i want to talk about three words passive active and momentum and i'm looking at a piece of paper here by the way so but passive resistance okay is a is a concept or a, um, an idiom that that i just coined and um basically i am sitting on my chair here okay I'm resisting gravity, okay, but, you know, basically it's my posture. But if I am approached from the side or the front or the back violently, I'm going to get knocked over and knocked off my chair, okay? So what I'm saying is the resistance that I would give to somebody would simply be my mass, which is diminishing. I think I'm under, uh, I know I'm about 260 or so. Uh, my mass plus gravity okay so the fact that i'm in a chair makes me it makes it harder for me to get knocked over if i was standing up it'd be a little easier if, especially if my feet didn't move okay which they do but um, passive resistance again it's simply my mass plus gravity so if somebody hits me it's whatever that force the sum of that force is okay so I can resist, but to a point. Now, if I was a feather, I'd be able to hardly resist anything. And if I was made out of stone, I'd be pretty resistant. Okay. So that's passive resistance. I am making no effort to resist any force that's being added to gravity. Okay. The second idea is active resistance. Okay. And this is when a guy hunkers down. He knows you're coming. He, get, he digs his feet into the ground. And he's going to take you on you know you're trapping him something like that and he is you're, you're firing out and you're you're going like a million miles you're running off the ball like all these guys are always talking about and uh you just run into a stone wall okay and what you want to do with a guy who's who's actively resisting you is don't attack his strength okay so what we've developed is this thought process of flipping, okay, flipping, okay, and think of it like rolling a boulder, okay. 
it's a lot easier to roll a boulder than it is to push a boulder or to lift a boulder. And I'm talking about a 300 pound, you know, I've used this analogy so many times now, I'm sick of it. But a 300 pound defensive tackle, and some of these guys are 350. I remember those two kids at Boston College in 06. They're both in the pros now. I don't know how big they were. They were about like six foot tall and Raji and I don't know who the other guy was, but they were good players. But they were hard to move. Okay, and slam it into them as hard as you can. Well, maybe if you're a Mack truck, but if you're not, if you're just a guy that's running and running off the ball, you're not gonna you're not gonna move them. Okay, roll them, flip them, lift them. Okay, I don't like to use the word lift, but elevate them. Try to get them out of their fundamentals, and then tear them or throw them. Okay, try to get them off balance. And once they're off balance, once they've come out of that fundamental and they have no resistance from their feet, you can move them around a little bit. Okay, and then the third type of force or resistance that you would encounter is when someone is attacking, and they could be attacking you or attacking somebody else. But when that person is attacking you and you attack him, well, the bigger, the bigger train is going to win. But when you hunker down and become that active resistor, okay, and a long time ago, a guy, a guy said to me, his name was John Gutekunst. He's a great coach. He was a head, head football coach at Minnesota. He's, he's a great coach. He said, offense is momentum and defense is extension. And I like to flip that around and say, well, sometimes offense is extension and defense is momentum. And by extension, I mean, you know, we're using our joints, okay, but when a guy's coming at you and you come at him, all right, if you hit him dead center, he and he's too big, he runs you over. If you hit him eccentrically, you spin him, you both fall down, whatever. Okay, hunker down. Okay, resistance is a lot easier to make than force for a, a biped, two feet on the ground. Okay, and if you don't believe me, think about power cleans, you know, 300 pound power clean. It's 300 pounds. I have both feet on the ground. I can't do it on one leg. I have both feet on the ground. I pick it up. I throw it up in the air. I'm, I'm creating momentum. I'm overcoming gravity. Off two feet, two hands. I could do it with one hand if I was strong enough to hold it. But, and then when it flips over and I go to catch it, okay, it's a different type of extension. It's not really extension. It's, it's contraction. It's, it's. Um, you know, negatives, I guess, uh, I forget, uh, eccentric and concentric, it's eccentric contraction, okay, and I'm catching it, I'm overcoming the momentum with my muscles and my feet on the ground, the momentum of that weight coming back down at me, okay, so is extension useful? Yes, is running off the ball useful? Absolutely, okay, but here's what I want to say to you. When you're encountering somebody who's basically passively resisting, in other words, he's not looking at you, he might be tied up with somebody else, or you're blocking down and he's really not paid attention to you, or he's standing there, go get him. Gain ground, run off the ball, make sure that you can change direction because another part of passive resistance is he moves. He just kind of avoids you. Okay, he's not trying to resist you at all. He's just trying to miss. You, you got to make sure that when you attack, you attack and make contact. Even if you make partial contact, it's better than no contact. Okay. When you en uh, encounter a guy that's giving you active resistance, again, roll him, flip him, okay, torque him, do something other than try to push him. Okay, you can attack him, but once you get there, add a force. And then, and then again, somebody that's coming at you, okay, hunker down, okay, add a force. And then once you get him off balance, go ahead and drive him, flip him, tear him, do whatever. Okay, again, I, I can't say that, that any of these things is the way to do it. I am saying to you that all three are needed, they're skills, they should be practiced, and you should try to, you don't have to explain it to them, but try to show them when they would be useful, okay? You know, it's the same old thing, you got one punch, 
If you can make that punch work, great. If that punch, if that, if that punch isn't working and you only have one punch, you're gonna lose. Okay, if you don't mind losing because you believe in something, you believe in it, and it's just the way it is, it's the only way to do it, have at it, bro. Um, but consider these forces and resistances, okay? And I think we've made enough of a point about it. Okay, in my next uh, deal, I'm going to explain how to coach, not teach, but coach the scoot, the scoot, scoot over. My friend Don Perry from about 30 years ago was the offensive line coach at Northeastern University who no longer has football. And he used the word scoot. I replaced him, by the way. He, he decided to get out of coaching. And scoot, scoot. It's, it sounds a little foofy, but it works. Okay, we'll talk to you. Bye.